Hello and welcome. I'm Tafara Gadamu. You're watching the Meet ETV show. My guest today, Dr. Richard Yetz, is a pioneer of what he calls grasp matics, a new approach to teaching maths. A very well, welcome to this show. What? <laughs> I'm a model. You, you, <laughs> I just tried that for a little while. Just try a little of the language for a little while. Perfect. Thank you very much. So you've been a, you've been three months here, right? Oh, that would have been great. No, I've only been here two one. They call in English twenty one days. <laughs> That's about enough to, That's, to, 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 to try enough American. Well, to you know, you to have try. to. You can't come to a people's country and, and, and not make a little attempt to at least learn the dialect or the language of the language, right? So you right. got to do something. Yeah. You, so, you're from the Caribbean, right? According to my mother and father, I was told that I was born in the only English speaking country in South America. Guyana. All right, British Guyana, BG, right, that's right. So what happened, I left there at a very young age and went to New York, which New York is my home state of residence, United States. But I don't really too care for the United States, especially the educational system, etc. You've been to several parts of the country. Yes, the, the, the world. world, yes. Fifteen. The uh, latest uh, count, uh, 15 yeah, countries. Right. Do you consider yourself a citizen of the world or <laughs> just one black man, one African-American? <laughs> well, I really, I don't con consider myself anything. I don't feel comfortable with the word con, <laughs> which is to trick or to fool. But I considered myself a citizen of the universe, not just the world, right? So why are you here in Ethiopia? I just wanted to understand mm. because off camera you told me that you are a descendant of an Ethiopian man. Right. Actually, you right. said the uh, Ethiopian man, mm -hmm. who, who is, happens to be your great-grandfather. Oh, right. Was in great, great, right. Great, great, right. Great, what great happens is that... Um, How do you know? Well, because of the family stories and being told in, in Guyana, you know, and the history, etc. But the most important thing is that uh, I can go places in, in Seattle or Washington, D.C., and run into Ethiopians, and they look at my name and says, looks very familiar, like the word in Ethiopian means where, Y-E-A-T. So when you look at the, the, the automatically see yes. that. Yeah, exactly right. Mm. But you know, Americans and the British have a way of changing people's name when they come to the country. So the story has been told that my great grandfather's name was changed over the years. So what they did, instead of it spelling Y E A T, what they spell is Y A T. They took the E and put it at the back of the of the T. You uh, yeah. Well, you depend on family stories right. that has been exactly that generation, generation, generation to generation. Right, right. But exactly. That's not, that's not enough. You could yes. as well have come. Your grand, great grandfather could as well have come from West Africa. It could, it could, it could, it, yeah, it could, yeah, it could have. But when you look at it from a linguistic point of view, there's no such word. My name is not close to any other African word besides the Amharic word or the Amaranian word. But that doesn't tell the whole story. Does no, it doesn't. That's why I'm here. So ah. to, to do the search. Ah, pilgrimage. <laughs> so what do you find out? Uh, well, it's only two one days. Uh, the time is young. It's only two one days. You know. Do uh, you feel that you are Ethiopian? Uh, I don't feel, I get the compliment every day when I walk the streets and people look at me and they say that. And when they, when they hear, when I say, you know, I'm from the Caribbean, which is United States Virgin, it says, but you look Ethiopian. I thought you were Ethiopian. You know, so why should I turn on that compliment, that encouragement? <laughs> I shouldn't. You, you, you've, you've come up with, as a new term, a new way of yeah. teaching math, and you called it grasp math. I'm, I'm, gla I'm glad you pronounced the P. A, a, a tongue twister. <laughs> Yeah, well, because the math is new and it is unique. And what it does, it helps a lot of educators, teachers, students. The entire you mean your way of teaching math or math itself? Math well, the is not old as well, well, the approach of, we're talking about grass mathematics. The approach is what we'll call, some people call it unorthodox. But what it is really. It certainly it, is. Yes, it is. What it is really, it is really simplifying math. And it's teaching math as a quanqua, right? Which is a language, as a language, right? So it's important that people learn math not just as a language, but in the simplest form of communicating. Mm. 